Hi, I'm Debbie from Simply Special Crafts. Some customers have requested that we help them with the Twilight Kingdom Magical Christmas Concept Cards. So these are the little snow globes. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. These are the pieces that are in our kit. You get six of these base sheets, so you're going to make a total of six cards from this kit. They have card boxes for your completed cards. They have an acetate sheet with six different images, and each of these images ties to the name on a topper sheet. We're going to do the festive, I guess we're going to do festive fairies, and this one says festive fairies underneath, so we know it goes with this card. And then you also get, I'm not sure you can see it, but you also get this sheet of um, uh, snowfall acetate that's already pre-marked where we're going to cut those out. These, have to, these two sheets of acetate have to be cut by hand. Simple, simple cutting because you're just cutting around them. And in addition to my kit, there's a few recommended supplies. I'm going to recommend that you use red liner tape. If you don't have red liner tape available, then my second recommendation would be to use the best glue ever. If you don't have that available, then go ahead and use white glue, but please know that it's going to be a bit of a struggle to hold this in place while it dries enough to, to maintain the bend as you work around your card. You'll see what I mean. I uh, have a pair of detail scissors available. I actually say a black sharpie because when I was working on my sample card, and this is the sample, I actually snagged a tiny piece of my card and I was able to completely disguise it to a point where I don't see it now <laughs> um, using just a black sharpie marker. So have one out just in case you need it so you avoid any disappointment. This is what our card looks like when it's done. It's got a little base on the back to make it stand up. I'll pick it up here so you can see we've got a castle and we've got Santa and his reindeer flying over the castle with the merry and bright. It's cute. Placed right on the back and a little stand that we'll put on the back. So that's where we're going. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. Move all these other supplies out of the way. And I'm going to begin with this piece right here. I want this one. It's marked piece A on your sheet, and I want this funny looking sawtooth thing. I'll pop that out. There's actually two of these. I want both the large one and I want the smaller one. And we're going to do something that is actually really unusual. Normally, when we're working on our pieces, we're always working from the back. We're taping on the back and doing that kind of thing. This time, we're actually going to be working on the front of our card. So that's a little bit unusual. This tape that I'm using is the Hunky Dory 8th inch tape. And I'm going to create a little tape line around the very edge of my card. Now, there is some flexibility in red liner tape, so you don't really have to cut all those little pieces. You can just kind of bend it around your card. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just staying out to the outer edge. Go around this little corner, so I'm going to clip this here, then come back in and tape down that little section there, and put another tape line right across the bottom. Again, stay pretty much to your outer edge. <clears throat> Now we have a nice red liner all the way around. I'm just going to rub that tape down. Make sure it doesn't try to peel on me when I take the liner off. 
And the next thing that I'm going to do is try and pick that up. Okay, this is the same on both sides. I don't think it's particularly directional. However, you can see that this piece, you see this brace, that this piece has a little score line here, and it has little score lines along the tabs, and then it has a little score line here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold all of my little tabs down on one side the easiest way I found to do that I could sit and bend them over one at a time but you can kind of fold the whole line at once and the next thing I want to do is I want this thing to allow me to round it so I'm just going to take some of the stiffness out of it just by kind of rounding it a little bit with my fingers Now, here on the end, I've got this score line. And what we're going to do is we are going to, of course, I'm going to peel my tape. I just want to show you where we're going. We're going to round this off, and we're going to stick it in that red liner tape. I'm not going to expose all of my tape at once. I want to do this a little bit at a time because I don't want to be sticking my hand in my red liner tape and I don't want to be messing up my piece by accidentally sticking it in so I'm just going to go about that far right now and then I'm going to take my little comb thing here I'm going to stick it right into my red liner on that edge I'm going to try as far as I can to follow the contours of that piece. Can you see this okay, honey? I think so. Okay. And now I'm going to begin working right out to the edge. And I'm going to start following my edge line along here. Now, this red liner tape is oh so much easier than this job was with a glue bottle. Because as I get up here with a glue bottle, the pieces were popping off back here and pretty much making this a nightmare. This is so much easier with the red liner tape. Okay, I can peel back a little bit more of my tape here. And I'm going to continue working around my circle. Just keep working around and around. I know it seems weird that we're working on the face of our project. I think that's one of the things that's kind of confusing in the, in the directions is that they don't make that real conspicuous that you're going to be working right on the face, but we are. Make sure you get that right out to the edge because that's where it's going to look the best. You'll get down here to where we have the score line again. We'll peel off that piece of tape. We'll fold that on that score line and then we'll try and kind of put that, follow the contours of that score line around. I'm just going to take my finger and I'm just going to rub these little tabs right into my tape. This looks like, yeah, I think that's okay. So we should have a nice smooth edge right out to the edge all the way around. Next, I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to fold my tabs over. So I've got a nice group of folds to work against. This has a little tab here on the side. That's where it's going to connect to the other piece. It's got a little tab here where it's going to connect to the other piece. So I'm going to fold these up and I'm going to add a little piece of tape to the sides here. <clears throat> 
This red liner tape I'm using happens to be from Hunky Dory. There's other good brands of red liner tape out there. It might be called Ultra Tape. It might be called Super Tape. But you really want the one that is clear with a red liner on it. The truth is, or probably, I don't know this with certainty, but I suspect that they may all be made by the same company. So they look the same, have the same basic holding properties, but they're manufactured under all kinds of different labels. So I'm going to peel off this bottom strip now. Oops. And I'm going to try to do that and leave the tape in place. You know me, I always have a problem peeling red liner tape. Where's my pokey tool? My pokey tool to do the job for me. There we go. I'll tell you, if you don't have one of these, this is the tool to have. It is good for so many jobs. Okay, and I already peeled. Yep, that's sticky. I already peeled that tape. So I'm going to start by sticking that corner together so that this little tab sticks to the other piece there. And then I'm going to work this right along the bottom. And then I'm going to stick these two tabs together here. Now I know what you're going to ask me. Somebody out there is going to say, can you put snow in it? And I think the answer to whether or not you can put snow in it is how close your, whether or not you have little holes around. See, for example, I'm not sure if you can see this in here, if there's anything we can do. If you hold it up to the light, you can see that I actually have a little light coming through right here. Can you see that on camera, mm -hmm. honey? Yes. I have a little bit of light coming through right here. If I wanted to put snow in this and not have my glitter or whatever I'm using for my snowy material, have that not go everywhere, what I probably would do would be to take my glue bottle, I'd run it along the inside here, right along the edge, and I'd put a good not super heavy, it doesn't need to dry all night, but a good line of glue around in there. And then I'd let that dry completely to a, to a clear, firm finish. And then I'd hold it up again and see if I still see light through it. If I'm still seeing light through it, you need to do it again. But that would be a way to seal that off so that you don't have that light showing through that I have right now. If you put glitter in here right now. If you put big flakes, you'd probably be okay. But if you put glitter or some other just kind of chunky glitter in there, I think it would be all over the place. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out my second piece, which is B. And it's this one. And we've talked before about the fact that Hunky Dory often gives you extra pieces. This beautiful little tree right here, this is an extra piece. We're not using that in the construction of this project. This is an extra piece that you can set aside and use in a different card. They just tend to print things into spaces to allow you as many elements as they can give you on a sheet. That's one of the things I love about Hunky Dory, actually. The piece I want to use is this one. This is garbage. <coughs> now, I'm going to cut out my tree. That should only take a second here. And I want to make sure that I'm getting the element that has the name of my kit. If you want to know which sheet you're using, look at the upper right hand sheet, upper right hand corner of your element sheet, and it will tell you which one you're using. This it's okay that this still has a few black edges on it because it's not gonna show. If it was gonna show, I'd be really careful with it. But see, this is festive fairies. And this was festive fairy, so I have the right piece. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you're putting your piece in the right direction. 
If you look at this black acetate, it's blacker from one side. It's blacker on the, on the side that's printed on than it is on the back. Now, it would not be a disaster if you got it in and the lighter side was showing. It just looks just 5% better if you have the bold black on the outside. So I'm going to make sure that that's the side I have taped down. And I'm either going to tape or glue this one in place. I'm going to use tape just because it's what I've been using. But it really doesn't matter. Glue would be fine for this project, although you would have to wait for the glue to dry. I'm going to tape around here the same way, just kind of rounding my tape. with. Okay, so I finished putting my red liner tape around here. And now I'm actually I'm going to put another little strip right across the bottom here so I'm catching all the surfaces of my acetate. And I'm going to peel my red liner. Back away. Take off that little piece I just put on the bottom. And I'm going to make sure that my tree is going the right direction. One side, the side it's printed on is really bold. And the other side is a little bit less bold. So I want my darker side through the window. Just going to lay my acetate up there. Go a little lower than I was trying to put it on. And rub that into my tape. Looks like I have a little tiny black edge hanging out here. I'll get rid of that. Okay, next. While we were waiting for the battery to charge, I thought, well, I might as well seal my card off. So this is what I meant by sealing it with some, some glue in there. You can see that my line of glue is still drying for demonstration purposes. I'm going to go ahead and keep going here, though. I'm using shaker tape. You don't have to do that. A couple of layers of foam squares will get the job done. I happen to have shaker tape laying here, and I thought, well, since I have it laying here, I'll go ahead and use it. But you could do the same thing with foam squares if you wanted to. I'm making this double high because I found when I made my first one, I made before I went on camera with you, that I actually wanted it to sit just a little bit higher than it was sitting with a single two millimeter layer. So I'm setting it up four millimeters and I'm just doubling up my foam squares. And you can see what I'm doing with that. I'm just putting them around on the inside so we'll finish getting these on and we'll be right back Okay, so I've put my foam squares in, and I just decided just this second that I want to add one more. So I'm going to add one more. We're still short on batteries, so I'm trying to be conservative, but I also want to make sure I do a really good sample for you. So, <laughs> foam tape stuck to my fingers. I'm going to put one more right there. Okay. Now we're going to take this little layer and we're going to drop it right inside here and tap it down to our foam squares and now we have a little dimension added to our card. We've got our backer sheet and we're coming out a little bit with our tree. Bryce and I have been having a discussion here. I'm finding myself really, really wanting to take some of my little red jewel dazzles and put ornaments on that tree. He's saying this is a silhouette tree, it doesn't get ornaments. I think we should see what they look like. So, let's see. 
He says, it doesn't fit the theme of your project. <laughs> yeah. But what do you guys think? Should it have just a few little ornaments? Little red jewel ornaments on this red card? I don't know. You guys can write and tell me if it fits or it doesn't fit. You agree with the cameraman? Or you agree with the designer? What do you think? about just a few, just a few little red jewels on our tree. Just a few. Because those fairies, they have to be celebrating something. I think they're celebrating having decorated their tree with these pretty little gold jewels. Now look, that's not too much. That's not too much to ask. One more. I see a spot for just one more. Okay. I'm happy now. <laughs> All right. Next, I'm going to go for the third piece, which is this one. We're going to pop these out. And you probably are not going to use this, these on this card, but they give you some extra greetings that you can use with your sets. You could put another one on the back of your card if you so chose. This is garbage. <coughs> and this time, I want to add a piece of Snowfall acetate. Not going to make you watch me cut it out this time. We'll be right back. Okay, so I've cut out my piece of Snowfall acetate. I've put my my tape around here, which I put to the wrong place. I put my tape to the outside. I actually wanted my tape to the inside of that line. So I will now go back in and add a piece of tape. It's not going to hurt anything that I have extra tape in there. But I just realized I did it. You really want your tape around the inside of this window because that's where your acetate's sticking. It's not wide enough to stick over the entire surface. See, I make mistakes too. The good news is there's hardly ever a mistake you can't fix. There. Now let's peel that off and our acetate's actually going to stick there. And I'm going to put it right in here. I'm going to rub my acetate into that tape I just put down. Now, while we were off camera, Bryce asked me a question, and I think it was a really good one. Am I going to put glitter in this side? And the answer is no, I'm not. If I wanted to put glitter in, I really need to put it in between these two pieces. And I'll tell you why. There's really no way to seal this top layer with glue because we're putting the top on it and there's really no way to get in there in an inconspicuous way and seal this side. So you can see on my sample card that you can, it's, it's just too loose. The glitter would come right out of the top. So if you wanted to put glitter on the time in your inside, to create a shaker, the place to do that would be between the back sheet and this sheet Put before you stick this topper down into your foam tape. Some of your glitter is going to get stuck on your foam tape. You still could get some, you still could get some movement behind there though. Okay, next we're going to prepare to seal this off. And to do that I'm going to go around with my finger and I'm going to bend all these little tabs down. I waited to bend it until after I put that second layer in because the first time I made this card I bent it down first <laughs> and then it was a pain to get the second layer in there. <laughs> it slid right in when I didn't have all these little tabs bent down. But I'm going to bend all these little tabs over And now I guess the tape that I put on here 
isn't a total waste because it's going to help. Because I'm going to go around here again. And this is where I'm going to, uh, I'm going to seal my topper to the top of this. So I'm putting some more tape around here. Normally I would just have the tape that's under the acetate. I would be adding some. Mine's a little extra sticky because of my little goof there, but that's life. And I'm going to go clear out to the edge with my tape because I want to go clear out to the edge holding on here. Get as good a seal on here as I can. And put on my red liner. Peel my red liner to have now. I'm going to rub it in just a little. Make sure it's stuck down really good. tool. Lift my tape up. Pokey tool really is a good tool for getting your both your red liner and even your finger lift tape to lift easily. She says as she pokes around on it and tries to get a hold of it. <laughs> Okay, oh, one more piece over here. All right, now we're going to put our cap on it. And I'm going to start right here at the lower corner. And I'm going to put my lid on. And I'm going to work around here. I'm going to kind of push this in a little bit as I go, and then I'm going to push my lid down to my little tabs there. You can hear the little tabs catching in the tape. That's a good thing. Down to the corner, seal those in good. And what we have is a beautifully sealed little snow globe. Okay, so we only have two things left to do on our pretty little snow globe. Be sure and vote. Tell me if it looks better with or without the little Christmas balls. They're really pretty. <laughs> okay, we're going to put our little hanger on the back. You can do that either with tape or with... Blue. I'm going to go ahead and do it with tape because I have it right here. Probably don't need to use my more expensive tape though. I'll just put a line of my finger lift tape on there. You can line that up right along the bottom so it'll stand up nicely and right up through the through the center. And <clears throat> We're going to use this pretty foiled black piece. Note it's printed on one side, foiled on the other. You want the foiled side out. The foiled is the shinier and darker of the two. And we're going to put our little sentiment. Now if you don't like their sentiment, they've actually created it so that you can put your own sentiment on the back, which is kind of fun. I think sparkle this Christmas works, especially with my little sparkly ornaments on the tree. But then again, that's just one person's opinion. <laughs> Bryce is here rolling his eyes at me. Help me, guys. He's rolling his eyes at me. <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to put this on with a little bit of foam tape so that it stands out. I am going to put my foam tape a little bit towards the middle so that the white doesn't show. If I had some black foam tape here, that'd be perfect. But... I don't, so I'm going to kind of put it towards the middle so it doesn't show. <clears throat> I hope it's everybody's okay where you are. I've been watching the hurricane coverage on the news tonight. That's 
something I thought should go out to the people in North and South Carolina. Stay safe, guys. Here it's just raining. That's just normal Oregon rain. And it's really welcome after a few months of warmer temperatures. We are enjoying the rain. But then again, we're not getting 20 and 30 inches of it. We're just getting little bits of Oregon rain. So stay safe, everybody. <coughs> okay, I'm going to put this right over the top of my bottom here. And there we go. We have a beautiful snow globe card. When done with the red liner tape, it works really well. Not so well with white glue. You can do it, but you have to be very patient. Let your glue get a little sticky and then work around a little bit at a time. But that's our specialty snow gobe kit. You got these wonderful little paper boxes. To put those in, you're just going to fold them up. Use some red liner tape on your boxes. They're scored so you can see how they go. And you're just going to put that together. Put, some, put a little tape on it to hold everything where it belongs. I think I'd, if I were you, I'd put these... <coughs> I'd put the... Uh, side piece on the one that one of these is going to be your flap to close it and put a little red liner tape right here a little red liner tape right here fold it up attach it to this side attach it to this side attach A little red liner tape right here to the back of the box and you can see how that's coming together then you'll be able to slide your little card in from the top so I'm Debbie from Simply Special Crafts this has been the snow globe specialty kit from Twilight Christmas and that we have a handful of these left available in the store. If you want one, get them quickly because I think we have 17 in stock at the time that this video is being made and it's already retired by Hunky Dory. So grab it if you want it. If you like this video, please be sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll put a little link on here so you can also subscribe to my newsletter. That way I can send you links to new videos and we put them out as well as the supplies list for everything we use in creating those videos. Once again this is Debbie and we'll see you next time.